What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Married to Reality. It's the Match Me Abroad edition. I'm your co-host, John, here with my wife and co-host. It's the one only Teresa right there. Ahoy, ahoy! Jak se všichni máte? Ten episodes in and she finally got it. Of course. Please. Please. We just podcast so much that I'm like, ahoy, hello, how are you? Jak se všichni máte? What are we even talking about? I like I like how you tried to make yourself sound so so cultured, so worldly. You're like, uh, hello, ahoy, <laughs> um, what's up? I mean, you you try to speak Czech when you can. Ahoy. You should speak more. Jak se všichni Yes, yes. Something like that. Jak se všichni máte. That's a new one. I mean, I know you said it on this How's episode before. How's everyone doing? You never uh, say that. You don't need to ask anyone how's everyone doing no i'm more personal i like to go one by one around the room <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you could say if you let's say enter my parents house and the two of them are there you can say yeah, now you tell me we after, can say, after five years well you can say yeah, individually they must think i'm such but a moron you, no but if you want to speak to both of them Yes. You can say Yaksemate. All right. Well, now I know. I'm going to blow their minds next time we FaceTime. You really, really need to learn more chat. Yaksemate, Ivana and Karel. Exactly. Oh. Ivana a Karel. Uh, Ivana a Karel. Oh, dobře, dobře. Okay. Yekui. Nastravi. <laughs> what else? Eh, we don't need to get into it. I mean, it oh, I forgot this, we're podcasting. This podcast would be <laughs> 10 hours long if I went through all the check that I know. Come on, Teresa. The people don't want to hear that. 10 minutes, guys. 10 minutes. What they want to hear about is Match Me Abroad. And thank you guys for calling in. This this podcast, this show is getting some love. And, and people are happy we're covering it. And I'm happy we're covering it. And I'm happy that you guys are happy. So thank you for letting us know that you love the Match Me Abroad coverage. We love love and love rock love. and all the other countries, and I love the concept of the matchmaking because it's new. It's new. Um, lukewarm on the concept because there is no resolution. You don't exactly. like re- not having a resolution. Precisely. But that's not what the show is about. It should be. A show is about meeting people. Should be. <laughs> there should be some red, or you, at least if there's a second season, let's pretend there's a second season mm-hmm. and there's no check. Ugh. How excited are you for it? Nah, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I still like it. I like the concept. I think you are spoiled by 90 day and married at first sight because everyone's are getting married and engaged. And I here, love... The only person who's thinking about it is Harold. I love closure. I, I need that. I need the story arc, right? There's really very little, and I, and I am not shitting at all on this show because it's provided a lot of laughs. I We've met a lot of nice characters and seen a lot of beautiful parts of the world. But as a storyteller myself, Teresa, if mm-hmm. you will, I need a story arc. I need the beginning. I need the middle and the end. And a lot of these people's middles are their ends. A lot of the people's beginnings are their ends. But what do you expect if they go there for two weeks? You hope you f- you you stay with it, or you, there's more matches. You're speed dating. You're getting multiple matches a day, and then you find someone, and then we get to follow up. There's not even going to be. Let me predict. There's not even going to be that end art card at the end of the series that says, "Harold and Misha have continued to talk." Nordine and Stanika I hope are planning that's what we're to. Gonna get. I bet you we won't even get that because I hope so. Well, let's see. That let's would be see. a closure. That would be the closure that I need. Yeah. That's what I need to go to sleep at night. I mean, we'll see. Bottom line is that I'm enjoying it. Oh, yeah. No, I, I really look forward to it for the aforementioned reasons of mainly seeing Czech on television. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, I think without, I mean, I love Chad. Chad? Me too. Uh, no, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> I love Chad. Um, who else really gets me? Susan really, you know, makes my blood boil for yeah <laughs> for different reasons. It's more of a love hate relationship. Um, Stanika is fun. This was yeah, a fun episode I like for Stanika her. a lot. Yeah, and uh, that's, probably, that's probably. I mean, right. obviously, we really love Harold. Oh yeah, but I I just lump that into Czech. Mm. Right, both Czechs are entertaining to watch. Um, Michelle and yes. and Harold. 
But we had no Michelle in this episode, but maybe next time. We had Harold, and, and boy, did Harold deliver. So, oh, yeah. We'll talk about that in a second. Before we do, real quick, guys, you know it. And if you don't, well, here you go. We're on Patreon, we're on Supercast. We're having a good time over there because we're covering 90 Day the Other Way, the new season that premiered a week or two ago. And what a season it is so far. If you want to hear our coverage of that, well, it's on it's on the premium channels, patreon.com slash married through reality or married through reality.supercast.com. Join us at the Cousins Club or the Family Affair level for that. It's all ad free, the other way coverage. If you're on the Family Affair level, you'll get video of us. You can watch us record the pod. And on the Family Affair level, you get a monthly bonus. Beautiful, beautiful. I, well I said it all, I'm, I just, I'm just letting you talk through this because I feel like when I start talking, I just prolong it. You really do. For I'm, no reason. I'm finally three years into this podcast and you've realized, <laughs> let me handle the business. But you're giving me a look like, talk, talk. I'm like, no, I'm letting you handle it. Well, sometimes I feel like I rant and I want you to spice it up a little well, bit. Well, because I want to talk about the pod, the episode, so I'm right. letting you do your thing. <laughs> so I, I I chose to stay quiet. Did some of our friends call in to you personally and just, did they have a direct number to you and they and they just said, please. Shut up. No, 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 no. <laughs> said, let, let John just get through the business quickly, right? Get to the meat of the episode. Just let him talk and get no through No one it. said it, but I really want to talk about this episode. So I'm just being quiet. Otherwise, we're just going to stay here for 10 minutes. I'll go down the rabbit hole and I have to get myself out of it. Get yourself <laughs> kinda, kinda out of like it. like you are right now. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay. Well, let me do it real quick. Back to the surface. Patreon and Supercast free trial right now. Seven day free trial if you sign up because why not? Try before you buy. So check it out. Also join us on Instagram, Married to Reality Pod. We're on threads. We're on Instagram. It's a good time. Message us. Check out the memes at Married to Reality Pod. Teresa's Guys, got something to say. Check it out. All right. Also, give us, a, <laughs> give us a follow wherever you're listening. It's so easy to do. Just look down and smash that follow button. Guys, smash it like it's, it's hot. It's the beautiful and one of a kind Moldavite. We'll talk about it a lot more in a little bit. So hold on to that. And if you haven't left a review, please do. We love the love, as we've said a number of times. If you haven't left a review, that would be probably the greatest thing you could do for us. If you leave a five-star review and you write something, we'll read it on the 90-day. Currently, right now, it's the before the 90 days podcast that happens on Monday. All right? There you go. That's the business. Nice. Let's do it. Let's talk about the reason we're here, which is Match Me Abroad, Season 1, Episode 10. Let's start in everyone's favorite country with everyone's favorite single, Harold. Harold. All right. All right. He's meeting Katarina. And, and he's feeling himself. He's feeling himself. And Katarina is a very enthusiastic Czech. Oh. You don't get a lot of Czechs who are this enthusiastic. But I think she exaggerates her personality because of her clients. Well, okay. Maybe you say exaggerates because of her clients. I would say maybe her clients have rubbed off on her a little bit. Oh, because or- it seems like she works with international yeah, yeah, yeah. international singles quite a bit. And as I've noticed with you, y- you start to interact with some Americans and then you become a little more Americanized yourself. I guess. You have, I, have I become a little more Americanized? In a good way, I would say. You, you've warmed up. You've become a little more lovey-dovey. What's, yeah. what's, what's my like big Americanized thing I do? Ooh. Ooh. What is the big Americanized thing you do? Hmm. I say, oh, my God, a lot. You say, yeah. Oh, oh my God. Besides, <laughs> yeah, besides the, the language, I don't know. You, you're really starting to crush a lot of pizza, which is something you said you never did before. Um, I, I don't eat pizza sober. Let's just That's put it this way. somewhat true. Okay. I need to. It has to be mellow mushroom pizza. Exactly. Not a sponsor, but they should be at this point. Such a good pizza, but okay. What do you think the most? I mean, the sports and the music you like that's not really specific to America. No, the way you dress is not American, <laughs> uh, the way you speak is not really American. What are you talking about? Um, what don't I sound so, one lady told me I sound like I'm from Wisconsin? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, what do you think the most American thing about you is? I don't know, I really don't know 
I guess um, I'm a I'm a Jeep fan. Oh yeah, sure. That's very American. Uh, I I own an American brand there car. There you go. I think I think that's got to be it. I think that's probably it. I love eagles. That's very true as well. The animals. Not the band. Not. Well, I like the band too. I was gonna say not the football team. Oh, boo! Because we, I don't watch football. Sure. I like the animal, the eagle. It's kind okay. of majestic. All right. Um, what else? I think that's probably it. I mean, I have star tattoo on my body. Uh, that right? seems like a European mistake more than anything. It was a big European mistake <laughs> that started in America. What do you mean? I got influenced by your culture. But you got the tattoo in Europe. I got the tattoo in Czech, but I was like 16 or 17, and we came to the U.S. to visit my fam. Oh, I know the most American thing about you. What is it? Your favorite band is Green Day. Oh, my gosh. The best band ever. Yeah. Is it American? A lot of, a lot of I, Europeans love Green Day. I guess so. We all love Green Day. All right. Don't want to be an American idiot. Here we go. <laughs> so Harold is visiting... With Katarina, he, he's going to fill her in on the date with Misha. And, and yeah, I think he's feeling good. He's He's got a pep in his step. He's rocking some Hollywood shades. He's feeling himself. He is. And he's telling Katarina all about Misha. And he makes it sound like they banged all night long. I all guess. All night long. All night. That's Lionel Rich. <laughs> That's El Richie right there. Because. Is it? I didn't know. I think so. Is it? Yeah. Eh. All right. Commodores, Lionel Richie. I don't know. One they the played a song on my favorite radio station all the time, but adult the hits. adult hits. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, Teresa. Because Harold says, "Yeah, it was a, it was a great day, great date, and great night, and uh, great morning." <laughs> he's literally talking about a, a one night stand, yeah. but he's not. And Katarina's like, oh, "Okay." Amazing. And she's trying to read between the lines. Yeah, I was I was picking up that Katarina half didn't believe it and half was concerned by it. Yeah. Like but, she was checking in, was this consensual? Oh yeah, because she's like, Did did she enjoy the kiss? Like, do you right. went for it because you felt like the situation was right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Harold's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. She, yeah. she was into it. She and was into it. then she was happy to hear that the morning day, the yoga day was Misha's idea. However, Harold called her. Right. Um, yes. But Harold. she could have said, hey, like, I'm hitting, um, I'm going back home now. Like, nice to meet you. Right? No, she I think, suggested it. I think she was, and is into Harold, but I also think that Katarina knows leave them wanting more. Don't don't smother somebody, especially oh, yeah. in the beginning, right? Leave them wanting more. And so the fact that there was an afternoon date and an evening date and a morning date, it's like, let them miss you. I agree, but let's not forget that Harold has autism and I think he sees the world a little differently. Good right? point. Plus, he's been unlucky in love, and he just wants to have the one person he always wanted, and it seemed to be Misha. So for him, this is it, right? I know we all go back, and I was like, wait a minute, this was like 12 hours (laughs) that he's talking about, right? Right. But this is it for him. All, All I'm saying is like, I'm nervous because I don't think Misha is moving as fast as he is. I don't think anyone is moving as fast as he is. No, I mean, he says, I, I don't want to meet any more matches. I, I think Misha's the one. I'm good with just putting all my eggs in this basket. And yeah, it makes me nervous that if and when Misha puts an end to this, he's going to be devastated. Oh, yeah. Or maybe they'll make it. Who knows? But I just realized one thing. You know, at the beginning, how they were saying, oh, these matchmakers, they are 100%. Um, successful right some yeah the the way they're successful it it doesn't count if they get married or anything the success rate is like all right are you happy with your match boom success yeah they don't have to make it farther or go to the altar and make it even to a second date yeah no i i think i i was saying that an episode or two ago with, I forget if it was Nina or Juan, and I'm like, this is not a success. Just because someone says, oh, yeah, I like the person. That's not a successful match, necessarily. But it's a successful match when both parties want to see each other again or want more. Okay. Because 
Katarina said it. She said, all right, Harold, I'm so happy to hear all this. That's beautiful. I'm here for you if you want to talk or you want some guidance, but now it's on you. Oh. Right? So she puts it on him, which is true. She helped him find a match that she's happy with. She's happy to give him an advice or help him with whatever questions he has or maybe go to the jewelry store. But the rest is on him. Would you say she's checking out? Well, I think Harold is going to be checking out some jewelry. Oh, all right. I don't know. I don't think she's checking out just yet because Harold still needs her. I don't know if you picked up on my check pun. Yeah, she's checking out. She's out. Check. Yeah. Check. Republic. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Uh, (laughs) Look who I'm talking to here. Who's the queen of check (laughs) puns? You are. It's me. You always get annoyed. All right. Well, give me a little something so I know that you're you're still awake. All right. All right. Um. So yeah, Harold. Harold tells Katarina, you know, I'm gonna go visit her home and, and meet her family and see where it goes. But I do need to figure out this grand gesture. The commitment showing. The, the yes, I, I need to figure out what that's gonna be. And you can see Katarina is kind of trying to pump his oh, brakes yeah. for her. Say, well, you have the next date. Just go on the date and see where it goes from there. See what happens. But no, Harold wants to make a grand gesture. Yeah, so he's going to this jewelry store. Let me just tell you this. TLC misspelled this guy's name. His name is Victor, and they spelled Vitor. How dare they, TLC? Right? And I, First the I, music, now the misspelling of a check. Victor with a K, that's the check way. Okay. Not a C. It's a K. Okay. It's like my name. No, that Ness, it's a Z. Got right? It. Uh, but yeah, he said, he said, uh, my name is Victor. And TLC's like, Victor? It's like, no, TLC. You keep fucking up with the music, okay, but now names? Mm. What's happening? What's happening, TLC? Anyways, Harold is looking at the jewelry and... Victor suggests that he'll take a look at the above mentioned Moldavite. Hello. Which in Czech we say Vltavin. And I literally was just telling John about it. I just didn't know the English name. So when they mentioned it, I was like, is, is it the same thing I literally just told you about? And it was. It's this meteorite that you can only find in the Czech Republic, and it's green, and it's beautiful. Okay, I know you're very excited about this. I looked over your shoulder, and I know you're looking it up, and you want to purchase it for yourself, but a couple things we do have to address before we get to the Wolverine, or the Moldavine, or whatever it is called. <laughs> um, Moldavite. Moldavite. So I think that's where Andre is from. So Harold says... You're going to get some <laughs> shit. <laughs> We're Guys, having fun over here. Feel free. We're having fun over here. So Harold says, I'm playing with the idea of proposing. So I think I want to get a ring. I think that would be the best choice. And Katarina says to the camera, oh boy, this, this does happen. When clients are far away from each other, they, they have to make a decision fast. But I've never seen someone make a decision this fast. This fast. So she tells Harold, look, Harold, you've only been on two dates. You, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this today. And... It gives Harold pause for a second oh, yeah. when Katarina puts that out there because he goes, well, I have been wondering. It's been a couple of days since I've really talked to Misha. And I don't know if we're able to communicate over the phone the way we do in person. Like in person, I can finish her sentences. I can't Ooh. finish her texts. Yeah. Well, she also works. And I feel like if she works as a receptionist, I guess she gets like 12 hour shifts. Mm hmm. I think she said at a hotel. Was it the like spa? Like a spa, yeah. Yeah. Well, who knows, but you don't text when you're at work. Like, I mean, you can respond here and there, but you, I'm not going to be having a full-blown conversation with you. Well, we've seen some 90-dayers who have had to quit their job so that they can continually text well, their partner. Correct, but I don't think Misha wants to quit her job to text. I would not advise it. But so Harold's questioning, is she still into me? And Katarina says, well... I did speak with Misha, and she did say she's very interested in seeing you. And Harold says, bring on the rings. Let's see the rings. So here comes the Moldavite. And again, it's gorgeous. I did a little research on Moldavite, if you want to hear my information. Okay. All right. So as you said, Moldavite, it's a a Czech stone. It can only be found in Czech. It is a forest green, an olive green, or a blue green. It's beautiful. Okay. It's it's a vitreous silica projectile glass formed by a meteorite impact in southern Germany 
that occurred 15 million years ago. You know, our anniversary is, uh, <laughs> you know, I'll send you a link. I, I bought you a ring uh, several months ago that I, I don't see on your finger all that often. What are you talking often. about? You bought it to me like two years ago, and I do wear it. You bought your own ring in Sedona that spoke to you, and that seems to be the one that's making the most appearances. My $5 ring. You got that right. I wear the other ring all the time. Yeah. It just has to match my outfit. All right, fair enough. No, you do wear it. You do wear it quite often. So, okay. The jeweler, Victor. Yes. Whips out this Moldavite ring. It's a, it's a piece of Moldavite on a 14 karat gold band. Mm-hmm. Priced at 833 US dollars. Uh, or 20,000 Czech crowns. Sure. So Harold starts to hesitate. He says, I, uh, let me think about this. Let me take a lap around the block and think about this because I don't know if I was, I was looking for a grand gesture, but I wasn't looking to spend a grand. Well, I think... He can find a cheaper version, maybe up to like 400 bucks, but maybe it wouldn't be a gold, golden uh, band. Maybe you can do like silver mm-hmm. and it would bring the price down a little yeah. bit, maybe less carats or whatever you weigh this stone in. Yeah. Here's what I would say about this grand gesture. And you could tell me I'm wrong. You, you speaking from the female perspective. I think going too big too soon could scare somebody off. Oh, yeah. If I hit you with a thousand dollar ring on the third date, <laughs> you would probably be a little weary of yeah, me. Yeah, right? I'll be like, why? But if I hit you with like a forty nine dollar ring, you might be like, oh, I don't know, we're giving gifts, but okay, this isn't anything too serious. Thank you. I would I just guess. be weirded out that you're hitting me with a ring. True, very true. Uh, if I hit you with a forty nine dollar necklace. If I was, oh, I saw this. I was at the store. I saw this. It made me think of you. Yeah. And I bought it for you. You'd be like, all right, I didn't know we were giving gifts, but okay, this is nothing crazy. If I gave you a thousand dollar necklace, you'd be like, this guy's nuts. Yeah, for Where sure. Where the bodies? Yeah. No, for sure. I think he should not be getting her a ring. Maybe, as you said, a necklace or, um, what do you call Bracelet. A bracelet. She's holding her wrist, guys. <laughs> <laughs> or a bracelet. Something. A little more chilled, almost like, hey, like, don't forget about me. Not, yeah. hey, do you want to marry me? But I'm going back to America, so we'll need to figure it out. It's like, no, whoa, we met. We literally went on one 12 hour long date. <laughs> yeah. Or you do, uh, you do one of those necklaces and it's half of a heart in each one, and the two hearts come together to make one heart. That would be beautiful. No. No, not for, th- I could see Harold and Misha doing that. Maybe. Oh, so cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> but that's where he's at. He's he's going to take a lap around the block and think about it because he's starting to feel like, is Misha souring on me a little bit? Is she going to ghost me? I've been ghosted before. I don't want to be ghosted again, especially not after spending $1,000 on this ring. Well, we'll see if he's going to buy it. But I think he is. I really hope he does. We see him going to Karlovy Vary. That's where ah. she's from. It's the northern part of Czech Republic. It's almost on the border with Poland, if I remember correctly. But I d- who cares about that? What's important? Or with Germany? No, Poland. Um, oh, boy. He's going to see where that multivite hit the earth. But what's important is that Hrades Kralva has one of the best zoos in the Czech Republic. Oh, and that really? was the first... I always wanted to go there when I was a child, and it's far from my hometown. It's like a five-hour drive. It's literally the opposite side of the Czech Republic. Okay. So my parents took me there on a trip to see elephants oh, when nice. I was like five or six because that was the only zoo in the Czech Republic that had elephants. Okay. I blew two or three films on elephants. You know, like those disposable little, cameras. No, disposable. It was a real camera. Okay. I had to load the film oh, in. Oh, the canister. Yeah. I'm in my 30s. Just think about it. The timeline. Okay. And I just, I was just like taking photos of all these elephants and it was a, it was a beautiful experience. Do we have any of those photos that we could share with our friends? Just, ele- they're just elephants. Okay. We have them? They're in my parents' album. Okay. Well, we'll try to get them to you guys. Yeah. They're just elephants. I'm not even in it. I don't think many of our friends have ever seen a Czech elephant. So uh, the same as all the other elephants. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it was just, uh, they just what Czech. an experience. Yeah. All right. Just a, just a fun fact Love about Hradec Kralove. Love it. Okay. With that being said, I think this is the right time to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about my other favorite single, 
on this season. All right. All right. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back in a second. Hey guys, Teresa's here. Time for an Obvi update. Brought to you by today's sponsor, Obvi. It's been about two months since I started taking Obvi's super collagen protein and their apple cider vinegar gummies. And it's literally become the best part of my health and wellness journey. I look forward to it every morning. Two scoops of the peanut butter cup super collagen protein powder and two apple cider vinegar gummies. Not only does it taste great, I feel great too. And don't worry, if you don't love peanut butter, what's wrong with you? Obvious super collagen protein comes in other delicious flavors too, like fruity cereal and caramel macchiato. All with 10 grams of collagen, 9 grams of protein, zero sugar, zero carbs, and only 40 calories. I've also started to include obvious burn capsules into my regimen as well. It's the first collagen-infused fat burner formulated to curb your hunger and boost your energy, all while improving your hair, skin, and nails. What more could I ask for, guys? Now, here's the best part. Our listeners can get 25% off today with code MERIT at myavi.com. That's myobvi.com and use promo code MERIT to get 25% off today. That's 25% off your entire order. I'll also make John put a link in the show notes. So thank you, Avi, for sponsoring this podcast and let Avi help you reach your goals this summer. And we're back. Hello, Jonathan. Hello or hola, Teresa. Hola, como estas? Está bien, y tú? That's where it begins and ends for me, unfortunately. Eh, we already got further than Chad ever has, <laughs> so I think we could pat ourselves on the back. Oh, our dear Chad. Still a fan of Chad. Um, I don't know if it's pity or if it's actual uh, sense of, oh, Chad's a, a good guy, but... I, I think lo- he's, a, he's a good guy. I just think he's a... A little naive. I don't even know if he's naive. He's just a little lost. He's a little in over his head. Well, is is that? I think so. I think here's what's happening. Okay, we're talking about Chad in Colombia. He's got another date. It's his second date in Colombia. It's his first date with Alejandra, a.k.a. Beba. I think Chad needs less hot women. In his life, he doesn't oh, know. Yeah. He doesn't know how to handle himself around hot women. I don't. It's. I think Juan really thinks highly of Chad. I think Juan wants to be best friends with Chad, and he keeps hooking Chad up with these hotties. But Beba is this like twenty six year old fitness influencer. Yes, and I hate to say like Chad is a nice looking dude. I think he's a nice guy. But if the girls want a cowboy, which this is what I think that Juan is advertising Chad as a cowboy, <laughs> they're thinking of, uh, what's his name? Rip from Yellowstone. Literally. Yeah. I was just going to say it. They're thinking of this badass, like, oh, cowboy tall and just like he knows what he wants. And there is poor Chad who all he wants to do is to just cut his grass. Chad is a rip off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would never call Chad a cowboy. I think Chad is a is a southern guy from a small town with a very, very heavy accent. Chad doesn't ride horses. Chad rides deers. John deers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, what's the other? What's the other brand of you like? Oh, steel. Real people. Steel people. Yeah. Um. All right. So Chad's got uh, Chad's got another day with another hottie, and. This time they're going for a walk in a park and maybe a picnic. Yeah, and Chad has a big ass backpack. I didn't notice the backpack. Yeah, and he's been getting it around for this whole time. I'll get to it. But okay. yeah, he's meeting Beba. She's 26, very pretty girl. And poor Chad is like, You you are you are Bonita. And she's like, No, <laughs> I am Alexandra. Alejandra. And he's like, muy bonita. Alejandra. <laughs> Didn't this happen with Maria? Uh-huh. This was the exact thing that happened. We're just running the script back. This is literally <laughs> the exact thing that happened with his first date. Yes, poor Chad. He yeah, he needs less hot women. He does not know how to handle himself around bonitas. And I think maybe in the beginning, Alejandra, Beba, Maria find it cute and charming. But if yeah. it keeps up, no, they want a real man. They do. And 
not to take away from chat. He is a real man, right? As far as we know. But he needs someone who's a little more grounded. Someone who is maybe in their 30s and is looking to settle down and is looking to move to Tennessee and watch Chad to cut his grass yeah. and make apple pies with his mom. Someone who just wants this more simple life, not to hit nightclubs and party and drink all night, which mm -hmm. is what Baba wants to go for. That's that's her idea of a man, like someone exciting and someone who just wants to party hard. And uh, I don't think it's Chad, unless... You're partying on the grass. Well, I was proud of Chad because this episode, he didn't mention the lawnmower. When Beba asked what he does for fun, he said, on Sunday, I go to church. I don't know if that's better, to be honest. Uh, for, with the right woman, it's better. If, if with it was, the right woman, If yes. it was Misha, that'd be music to her ears. So with the right, and don't change yourself for somebody. No. Give it to them straight and they're going to like you for, for who you are or they won't. So I was happy we didn't get any lawnmower talk or divorce, divorce talk. Yes. So he's he's doing all right so far. They're walking around. It starts to pour. I was gonna say not a divorce, just failed engagements, which is oh, yeah. worse. Yeah. So okay, it starts to rain. The picnics rained out. So Baba says, "Well, why don't we head to town for a drink?" But let's grab some caramelized milk on the way, which I'm very intrigued by. What is it? Caramelized milk. A lot of interesting milk this episode. I love <laughs> there's caramelized milk. milk. There's spoiled milk. A lot all of sorts, milk. All sorts of milk. So the babe was like, why don't you call the driver? And while they do, they kind of just, they're waiting in the rain. And Baba says, do you like to dance? And Chad goes, oh, Lord, no, you'd have to show me. And so... Baba starts to show him how to dance. It's raining and they're dancing and it sounds romantic. It was not. No, it was not. And it's because, let's just be honest. She she finds him maybe cute, cute American cowboy, but he's not the guy for her. No. He's not. You can tell, you can read her. Like she wants someone who's like exciting, who's living each day as is their last, who's just going to be hitting the clubs, hitting the bars, traveling the world, and not on a, on a mover. Mover? Uh, mower? Mo lawnmower. Lawnmower. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think she's giving him a chance, though. Like, she finds him attractive. Yeah. She finds him cute, sweet, nice, and she's maybe hoping he's just shy, and he'll open up, he'll warm up, and things will be better. So they head to Chad's hotel for drinks, and... In the car ride over, Bay was like, have you ever dated a Latina before? Chad's like, no, I'm trying something new. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean. Oh, what? Chad. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean. Huh? I hate it. It just rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> I hate I hate all these little sayings. You, come on. I've hit you with so many before. Some I, have stuck. Some you I like. I like some, but the Jelly Bean, no. Not the Jelly Bean, but we, we've stuck with... Um, What's the plan, Stan? Yeah, I like that. Um, what else? Uh, That's it. Even Steven? No. I think. No, we haven't. No. What's no, the not the crocodile. What's no. the plan, Stan? Okay, not, not in a wild crocodile? No, I hate that too. <laughs> I like what's the plan, Stan, because it's funny. And sometimes we end up calling each other Stanley. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I like what's the plan, Stanley? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so they get, to, they get to the bar. Here's what I didn't like. Chad says, I'm going to go change my shirt. Okay, so he goes to change this shirt, right? You would assume that he's going to bring the backpack back to the hotel room, mm. right? And just bring his wallet. <laughs> okay. He's going to bring the backpack back. Interesting. He has the, his backpack with him. But let's talk about going to change because I have a couple of issues with it. Okay. First and foremost, he leaves his lady at the bar by herself. Yeah. Okay. On top of it, they've both been out in the rain. They're both wet. Yeah. So deal with it together to be like, I know you're probably wet, but I'm going to go change because luckily I have my clothes here. I think it's rude. I think he just felt like a wet dog and he just wanted to change. I don't blame him for wanting to change, but imagine you and I were just out in the rain and I'm like, I'm going to go get dry. No, you're going to sit here in the, in the wet yeah, clothes. I no. think it's a little yeah. distasteful. Well, 
Beva can entertain herself because she ordered a double whiskey on the rocks. That's my kind of girl. And he's telling the bartender about her blind date. And I think she's kind of like m- making a little fun of it. Uh, she was like, I'm straightforward. I'm bold. He's shy and going to need to loosen him up with a couple cocktails. It's it's all good fun, I think. I though. mean, going for a double whiskey on the rocks means she's trying to get herself drunk so she can deal. So I don't know if you saw this. Chad comes back. You might have been eyeing the backpack and missed this. By the time he got back, Beba's drink was almost empty. So she like chugged that double. Oh, yeah. Within the 10 minutes at I most that, that he was gone. And, and he arrives and she's like, we're going to drink. Yes, and I think that's the way she can kind of cope with the situation because at, towards the end of the night, she's like, oh, my gosh, like, I didn't like him at first, really, but like <laughs> he's so cute. I definitely like want to see him again. It's like, and that's all the booze stalking. Yeah, I think Chad got a little toasty, too, because oh my gosh. he's like slumped over, leaning on the bar. His eyes are half shut. It's like, Chad, you're not in your local pub in Tennessee. Yeah, you want to you keep your wits about you. In yes. a foreign country. Getting drunk on a first date is a no no. I would agree with I would agree with that. Having I, a drink or two is okay, but do not get drunk on the first date. At first it looks really bad. Second, it's just you won't have a clear idea about your day. Like seriously. Like if you get drunk, then you go home, you wake up, you're like, wait a minute. Did I like this person? Like, was it fun or was it just me being wasted? Yeah, I don't even know if he drank that much. I think it just hit him. I think he'd probably been out all day. Maybe they didn't eat much. They were filming and then he gets back and he has a double or two. And I think Mm. it just hit him. I don't think he had 10 drinks. I think he had maybe two doubles. Who knows? Because she said, let's drink. True. True. So they wrap up the date. Chad says, I hope there's going to be a second date. And babe was like, we'll see. But then she tells the camera, oh, yeah, I'd go on. Another day with Chad. It's a total match. Yeah. Uh, it's a total match between her and the whiskey because it got her talking. <laughs> yeah. But I don't see a second date. I'll no, just be honest. I, I might see a second date. I don't see a third. They said goodbye. There was no kiss. Chad said he didn't want to mess it up by being too eager. But for Chad, he's now thinking, oh, man, I have two beautiful women wanting me. I have Maria, I have Beba. <laughs> Which one should I go with? Well, I think the question is, which one wants to go with you? Well, here's the thing, and we'll talk about it when it gets to Huda and Mark. You both have options, and you both are allowed to go after what you want. It's not one-sided. I just think Juan needs to match him with someone who's more appropriate for him. Someone a little more grounded. Yeah, okay. He I keeps can... matching him with these 20-something-year-old girls who just want to go out, I want to party, I want to drink. And listen... I'm not saying it's wrong. When I was in my mid twenties, that's all I did. Yeah. So I get that, but that's not where Chad is. So why do you keep matching him up with these women who clearly want something else? So you want him to have fun? Okay, cool. But he's not here to have fun. He's here to find a wife or a girlfriend. So match him with someone more appropriate. Teresa. Juan sucks. Juan I know. stinks. I know. <laughs> Juan stinks. Okay. All right. Let's move on. The milk's gone bad, Teresa. Oh, yeah. Milk, Our girl, Stanika. Milk was a bad idea. But luckily, everything else was very good. Yes. Minus the couscous, uh, which looks, I freaking love couscous. Looks good to me. Stanika's at Nordine's house, sipping on that on that fresh milk, saying, in America, this tastes like the part we don't drink. But she's being a, she's being a good sport. She tried it, right? She You got to give her credit for that. And she moves on to the food, the bean and the eggs, which sounds bad, but looked great. She's like, not really digging the couscous, but damn, the, the <laughs> damn lamb. These people know how to cook a damn lamb. Sanika and I just loved the, it. Sadiqa was loving the lamb. Uh, and so mom wonders, all right, you're liking the lamb. How are you liking Morocco? And Sanika says, I like it. I like it. And then she asks about, mom asks, well, how do you like my son? And Stanika says, oh, I like him too. And then Stanika asks, okay, how do you like me, mom? Mm -hmm. And mom loves Stanika. And the way mom describes Stanika, it's so true because she's like, she's so nice and so positive, so happy, smiley, which is so true. Mom's got a good read on her. Like the only thing she maybe messed up in a way was like she didn't chug her milk, but she tried. 
As, that's all you can ask of someone. Yeah. Just try it. For sure. Except if it's me and Carp. So, so much love. And mom, this mom is one of the coolest moms we've seen on 90 when it comes to religious backgrounds. Because <laughs> mom is like, I just want Norden to be happy whether he moves to the US or here. You guys are going to stay here. I'll be a little sad because he's the last one that's going to leave the nest. Yeah. But I, as long as he's happy. It's the right answer, but it's almost unbelievable. You almost go, is this for real? Do you truly believe? Are you this cool with it? They strike me to be a little more westernized than a yeah. lot of other. Okay. So be, uh, I don't think mom is westernized, but I think Nardine has that mindset. And maybe it's because he's a tour guide. He interacts True. with tourists and and tells mom about it. And I think mom is just happy that her kids are happy and healthy. And if this is what he needs to do, sure. Plus he's what? In his mid thirties, late thirties, it's like a- time for him to shine outside of mom's house. So I think mom is just happy. If mom's happy, and, and this family moves fast. I mean, mom's like, I feel like Stanika will become a member of the family. I think she may have mentioned kids or something like. Yeah. Mom is ready to go. Mom, chop chop. Let's get this thing moving. But so is Stanika. Maybe not so chop chop, but Stanika came here to get get a man. Yeah. Because she. Wasn't able to find anyone she liked in the U.S. or anyone she wanted to spend her life with. Well, she's in Morocco. She's not here to find a one-night stand or a booty call. She's here to find a husband. Yeah. It's it's just a little wild because isn't this Stanika's first relationship? It is, but I'll tell you this. There are only two people on this show that I really wanted them to meet someone great. Let me guess. Okay. Stanika. Yes. Because we're talking about it. And... Drum roll, please. Harold. Yes. I know my wife's Because he deserves it. I really feel for him. I want him to find the one. I hope he pumps the brakes a bit. And he chose the right country. Very true. And for Stanika, she's such a fun girl. She's so positive and she's a good sport. She accepts the culture. She learns about the culture, which we don't see often, right? right? And she seems like a good girl. So I really want her to find love, too. As for the rest, well, I think, what's, what's her name, Natalie? I think Natalie is, like, super cute but super young. Mm. She will meet someone good mm-hmm. without Juan. Susan, Susan's just complicated. A little complicated. Right? Then we have Michaela in the Czech Republic. We'll see. We'll see about her. Obviously, I wish love for everyone, <laughs> but Stanika and Harold especially. All right. There you go. Should we move on to Susan, complicated Susan? Complicated Susan and her semi-swell dog. I, I wrote Susan and her semi-sweller are packing up. She's <laughs> she's leaving Colombia today, and, and she wants to debrief with Juan about the date with Mauricio. You know what would make the dog sweller? I, I have a thought, and I don't know if this is going to sound offensive because I'm not too familiar with this dog, but I would say take the little clip yes. out of its head. Freaking they do that. Uh, no. Did, a, did the dog ask you to do that? No. I'd say here's where it ends with decorating dogs. Bandanas. That's about it. You can tell a dog really likes rocking a bandana, but a dog doesn't want to be dyed. A dog doesn't want to be poofed. A dog doesn't want to be braided. That's it. You slap a bandana on and you call it a day. I agree. Yeah, I don't like, and again, you made a good point that the dog has long hair and I think that's the breed. Mm-hmm. So I think if it was falling in his eyes or her eyes, the dog would have a hard time seeing. But you know what the amazing thing about animals? You can shave them. No, they evolve. <laughs> they, they evolve just like we've evolved. And if it's a necessary element of their being, they'll evolve to survive with it or without it. And so I don't think a dog needs accoutrements. I don't think a dog needs a barrette in its hair. I agree. Yeah. I don't think dog need, dogs need anything human. I would Although agree. I do like the backpacks for dogs that they can carry their own poop bags and treats. Sure. Well, that's just convenient. Very convenient. Yeah. I, I agree. Also, I saw this dog on the social media that just... Carries his own leash. Well, that's a very swell dog. It's a very swell dog. He's just being on the leash, holding himself. Like, <laughs> that doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> He's holding the leash in his mouth. Very independent. Wow. Why does he have the leash? <laughs> I don't know. But oh. I just liked it. Okay. You'll, you'll have to show me. <laughs> All right. So Susan's going to chat with, with Juan about Mauricio. And she says, well, we left it that we're going to keep talking. And Mauricio's going to let me know when he comes to New York City. 
Yes, and Juan is like, Susan, you look different. You, you're like happy. And Susan's like, well, you finally matched me with someone I, I liked. Yeah, I think Juan feels like Susan's had this growth. But no, uh-huh. you, you just threw some dick at her that she actually liked for a change. Yes, I, th- I thought that maybe the first guy could have been a good match, but I get it. If you don't vibe conversation conversation vibe, yeah. you, you cannot make it work, right? I, I'm with you. I'm with you. But Susan found maybe a booty call or a pen pal or something. Yeah, and Mauricio is good looking. He's artistic. That's what Susan wanted, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so they're planning on meeting in New York City, so who knows? Yeah, she's happy. Susan toasts to Juan, which is what an underdog story. This uh-huh. was now now Susan's coming around and said, like, I'm gonna miss Juan. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. No. And and so Juan's like, This is a huge success. Great success. <laughs> it's probably his biggest success. <laughs> yeah, I, I think he's new to the game. I need to know more about Juan. Oh, uh, do you? No, not really. Exactly. All right, do we have one more single? One more. Let's go back to Morocco. Mark on another day with Huda. Second date with Huda. It was like this nice restaurant with a pool in the I middle. I couldn't get a read on it. At first, I thought it was an event space. Right? And I thought, oh, what's going on here? What are they going to be doing? What sort of activities? But then they just sat down and ate. Yeah, I think it was a restaurant. It seems to be. But they were sitting down chatting about her business I think she's doing bathrobes, like embroidered bathrobes. Something like that. Like Etsy style, I guess. Something like that. It's been almost four years. And Mark is loving that she's a strong, independent woman. Yeah. And speaking of bathrobes and attire, Huda's like, oh, your outfit today. I I like it. You look normal. Mind you, he was just wearing a black T-shirt and cargo shorts. But Huda's like, whatever you were wearing before made you look old. Yes. So Mark is like, so now I was, I was, I was looking way older now before. Now I just look old. Yeah. <laughs> and she loves his sense of humor. Apparently that's what really made her want to see him again. Well, that's the thing. She tells the camera, when I first met Mark, I didn't like him. He looks so old, but, yeah. he, but he's funny. And so that made me give him a chance. Like, re- huh? And apparently her, her family loved him. Did we all watch the same thing yeah, when everyone, the, everyone one by one called him, called him old and then she showed up his outfit, yeah. and told, told the camera that, oh, he's old. So everyone called him old, mm-hmm. but everyone apparently loved him. Yeah. I can't get a read on Huda or this relationship, but it's no, I don't think he needs to move on. I don't think Huda's the one because listen, he's here on a mission. He's here to meet the one. And if he's not vibing with Huda, of course he'll keep dating, but that's a big no-no for Huda. Yeah, so they sit down after they finish eating and they're making small talk and they put their feet in this pool and Mark goes, well, this is our second date. Is this when you normally kiss people? And Huda says, not until marriage. Which, really? It's cultural. I think it's... I thought it was a sexy time. Oh, that for sure. I'm just going off her word. She says it's the culture, it's, it's the religion. You see, and Mark's I, like, no way. I couldn't I couldn't figure out if she's joking. I couldn't either. What's for certain is they did not kiss. No. They did not kiss. And I think Mark is a little, at least he asked, but he's a, he's a little upset. I think that this is her reaction. Well, I think she's upset because she's like, well, are you like gonna see some other girls? Like, what's the plan, Stan? Hey. And he's like, "Well, I have one more lined up to meet." And who does like? All right, I mean, you do you. But if you're gonna meet her, you will never see me again. Mm. Which is kind of like, okay, this is the second date. You don't even want to give him a boop. So why wouldn't he go and date? Like, we date. Like in the U.S., you date, right? I think until in a lot you of feel, countries you date until you feel that. All right. This feels good. I'm going to stop dating others and I'm going to yeah. focus on this person to see what it takes me, right? I don't think that at the point that he can be like, okay, she's she's it. Yeah. And here's the interesting thing. And, and maybe it's not, it wasn't so clear, but we have another single in Morocco. She goes by the name Stanika. Stanika went out with multiple men. Yeah. And Nordine, I feel like maybe... He knew he, about it because she was texting him from the dates. I feel, yeah. 
and he didn't seem to have a problem with it. He was confident in himself in the relationship. And look how that's ending up. Yeah. And he understood she was there on a mission and it's almost better. Let him or her go out with other guys or girls and if they still want to go back out with you or they want more, yeah. that means that, okay, they tried, but you're still the one. I couldn't agree more. We may have told this story in the past, but I matched with Teresa on the oh. old the old Tindy. And <laughs> we went out on a date and I really liked her. But I had another date lined up with a girl I had been seeing previous to Teresa. Oh, don't tell me about it, slut. And what a gentleman. <laughs> what a, I'm kidding. What a gentleman I am. I, I said, I'm not going to just break off this date that I had scheduled with this other girl. I'm going to go out and I'm going to just see because now I, I got some comparisons to make. And I went out on that other day and, and all I could think about on that other day was, oh, I wish I was here with Teresa. Oh. And so I knew that, well, that was the last date with her. But that's what you do. You got to go. It's your life, folks. Right. You got to make sure you're making the right decision. And the only way to know that is to give yourself chances and opportunities to figure it out. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. I wasn't dating anyone else at the time, but but, I'm glad you, but, John you, but you had fixed. and you knew and you could compare yeah. and you could say, OK, I found what I'm looking for. Yeah. I went on bad dates prior. Oh, yeah. Oh, let's not even go there. But yeah, when I <laughs> met you, I was like, all right. Yeah. Who does like, oh, Mark just thinks women are objects and he can just pick one. And it's like, sort of, but you can pick two. Like you're choosing to go out with Mark just as he's choosing to go out with you. Yeah. I don't think he looks at women as objects. I just think he is there on a mission. He's there to meet some women and date and see if one of them is a potential match or wife right exactly that's what he's doing he's not like oh i'm here to bang all the girls it's like no he's there to do what nina scheduled for him so i don't agree with huda at all yeah and, and i think mark is kind of feeling maybe Huda's not the right one for me maybe there is someone better that will be the mother to my child and my wife and so I think he's keeping the door open for these other dates. Yeah, I don't see a love connection, to be honest. No, I, I don't either. I don't see any connection. No, I don't either. Right? I don't either. I hope he'll go on the other date Definitely. and see what's out there. Definitely. All right. That is episode 10. Ooh. What an episode. There's got to be, I, I don't know when this thing is wrapping up, but I think Mark's got some more dating to do. I think Michelle and the and the Czech Republic has more dating to do. Chad, Harold, Chad's got probably some more dating to do. Harold's oh, we'll gonna see go. Harold, yeah. Harold's gonna go see Michelle. So I think we got a, at least a couple more episodes. I really think it's gonna go all the way until the last resort. Oh no, last resort's Monday. This is Sunday. Interesting. I don't know what TLC's gonna do. We'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> All right. That is that. Thank you guys for listening. If you want more, if you want 90 Day the Other Way, well, it's on Patreon and Supercast. Patreon.com slash Married to Reality or Married to Reality Supercast.com. Supercast is wildly easy to sign up for if you're into that. I, I did it myself for a podcast and I couldn't believe how easy it was. So check it out. Right now we're doing seven day free trials. If you want to try before you buy. We're all for it. We support that. Yes. Also, we're on Instagram at Married to Reality Pod. We're on threads at Married to Reality Pod. Check us out over there. Make sure you're following the podcast wherever you're listening. It's so easy to do. Just look down and smash that follow button. Guys, smash it like it's is hurt. Is Harold going to Carlo Vivari because we're going to see another <laughs> Czech town. We love that. And if you haven't left a review, please do. We love the love. If you leave a five-star review and you write something, we'll read it. On the Monday podcast. Yes. All right. There you go. I think I've said it all. Have you? Said it all. You said it all. It means we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.